Well, the cashier was ringing me up inside the gas station. I stared blankly at a rack of chips. While I was filling up the car, I watched the road disappear <coughs> over the horizon. In, In hindsight, hindsight, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have, have expected, expected him to, to stay. My wife didn't want to leave Detroit in the first place. Lot just didn't seem to care that we were leaving everything behind. He just didn't care. The girls ripped out of their school systems all of a sudden and shipped 25,000 miles to Los Angeles. Detroit was dead to him. Dead like the gas that makes it go. I lost my job at Chevrolet putting tires on cars. I'd been doing that for 20 years. I looked for months, but there just weren't any jobs there anymore. Finally, I got a call from my friend in California. How could I turn him down? This, this job, job will change, change everything. everything. I married Lot because I thought he was going to stay. I can't be with a man who's always moving. Daddy was like that. Daddy drove trucks out of Detroit and spent most of his time in places like this, surrounded by rusted pumps and racks and racks of salted chips. My job is looming on the Western Sea. I can almost see it. I can almost smell the ocean. While we were driving, we didn't say a word. We, we were, were always silent when we were together. together. While we were driving, she kept looking out the window like she was never going to see Michigan again. He gripped the steering wheel and stared straight ahead. I just wanted to drive. If it were up to me, we wouldn't even have stopped for gas, but the gauge was already past empty. If he wasn't so worried about stopping, we would have never stopped. I've never liked gas stations. Never. Just too many gallons, gallons of, of old bones, bones underground, <laughs> waiting to be pumped into cars, waiting to move forward. When my father died, I learned that I loved waiting more than anything else. I loved staying up until the darkness was thick and heavy. Trying to remember what his beard smelled like, imagining what he would bring me. When his headlight shined through my window, part of me was always disappointed that the wait was over. The girls were asleep in the back seat when I stopped. I didn't want to wake them up. When my father died, I got to wait like that forever. My wife went inside to pay while I stayed out with the pump. I could feel the thrumming of the gasoline under me. Ancient, powerful, deep. The pump clicked off, then he put the nozzle back into its handle. Ancient, powerful, deep, like darkness slit by headlights. I waited a long time. I sat in the blazing hot car with my hands on the wheel, waiting for her to come out. I couldn't come with him. As soon as I felt this place, I knew I was going to stay. Honey, <clears throat> come with us. My father drove trucks out of Detroit. Sometimes he drove them back in. I used to stay up late, late at night, waiting for him to come back. All I had in those moments was myself and the feeling of the sheets wrapped around my legs and fingers. The girls need you. Come with us. The feeling of my breath and the feeling of the darkness on my shoulders. Sometimes a car would crank by my window, and my heart would roar with a groundswell of excitement and the subtle pungency of disappointment. Come with me. I wish I could stay in those moments forever. Finally, Lot realized I wasn't going to come. I was standing, looking out the window, pretending to flip through magazines. I wished he wouldn't come inside. Finally, I heard the engine start. Tell the girls I love them.